We've been celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Trans Pennine Trail. Here's John's final support. <laughs> Salters Brook in the Peak District marks the highest point of the Trans-Pennine Trail, 435 metres above sea level. This rugged part of the Pennines attracts around 38,000 people to the old packhorse route each year. And thanks to innovations in wheelchair design, that number is growing. Hello Tim, Matt, great to meet you both. Hi John. So Tim, you're the designer of this mountain trike. Why did you design it? I designed the mountain trike to help people of all abilities enjoy the countryside and access places like this Trans-Pennine Trail. It's a nice bit of kit. Is it based on a mountain bike? Yeah, that's right. It's inspired by mountain bikes in the design and yeah, use components from mountain bikes that are ideal for going off-road in all conditions. And you, Matt, you were one of the early users, weren't you, of this trike? Yes, I was, yeah. I got it about six years ago. And what does it meant to you? Oh, it's, it's, it's really good. It allows me to go into the hills and the countryside and like, to get a bit of sun. Yeah. And uh, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I, I, I can go out and walk with family and stuff like that. Um, not like I have, to, not, I have to stay at home. Really, yeah. yeah, and get lots of fresh air. A lot of fresh air, yeah. Which is great, isn't it? Yeah. On a day like this. Yeah. Wonderful. Legacy funding from those who in the past have enjoyed the trail has meant other areas are now becoming more accessible to everyone. Helping to make this happen is Access for All, a charity which aims to improve the lives of people with disabilities by making the outdoors more user-friendly. Gillian, you've been left a, a legacy uh, which has allowed you to fund different things along the path here, hasn't it? Uh, it has, yeah. It's been a, a great project to improve accessibility. So it opens uh, the area up for people like my son Sam, who has got autism and had a, a stroke, people with dementia, vision, hearing impairment. So there's been lots of improvements made along this Transpennine Trail. And this is like a role model section so that other areas can follow. The barriers have been removed. There's lots of additional seating accessible toilets. It's great to add in all these features along the trail and um, it means that people can enjoy a great day out. Although the whole 350 mile route is not fully open to those living with disabilities, Hannah Beaumont from the Transpennine Trail says making it accessible for all is the ultimate goal. OK, Hannah, so it's important that the uh, Transpennine Trail is accessible to all, isn't it? What's in the pipeline going forward? So we're looking at opening up the whole trail, removing all barriers, installing some sandboxes across this stretch of the trail. And 1.7 million people, apparently, you tell me, use the Transpennine Trail. Are you hoping to increase that in the future? We are, especially with the improvements we're going to be making, but it's not going to be possible without the friends and volunteers as well. I tell you what, I can see Southport just over the horizon there. It's not far, is it? It's not too far at all. Come on then. <laughs> Thanks to the vision of two pioneers 30 years ago, the Transpennine Trail has become one of the most popular long distance paths in the country. Its outstanding beauty in both rural and urban areas makes it unique and with ongoing improvements to the trail, more and more people will be able to enjoy its wonders. I have a feeling the weather's not going to be as nice as that. No, here's so, Philippa. No.